So uh, let me uh, go back to the past for a couple of minutes and share how EVM uh, took birth in this planet and how we all are interconnected. So I am from India, in central part of India, studying, working in the community called the Nalanda Academy. They are uh, from, from the connections uh, of Nalanda Academy. I came in uh, connection with uh, David Albert, who is uh, one of the uh, friendly waters for the world. And for uh, uh, the constant in touch with them uh, for a couple of uh, years uh, uh, since 2019, 18, 19, and we connected with the climate alert. So basically, the climate alert group is a, uh, is a group uh, of people. Actually, they started in summer 2021 as a group of climate activists uh, that was introduced uh, through like uh, mutual connections like us. And, um, uh, and uh, they, uh, they interconnected with the several groups in that. And, uh, uh, they started uh, uh, as a uh, like boom dialogue practitioners. Uh, actually, boom dialogue is is uh, is an approach. Uh, uh, in in a simple manner, I can I can decode this like uh, a discourse or group of people uh, who came together for uh, like uh, like uh, communicate communicating for a shared meaning. Like there, we we find a space uh, to explore the thoughts and and to pick out from uh, pick out from the reasons. I mean, uh, might be uh, uh, is there is there any background noise is coming, or or, or my voice is clear. Or, or my voice is clear. We can there is, yeah. Yeah. There is some background noise. Um we're we're doing our best, but just keep going, Raul. And I will also try to put some notes into the chat as you speak. So okay. okay. So uh a boom dialogue was um, boom dialogue was communicating uh, communicating across the boundaries for finding shared meaning. So we started with that. Uh, uh, David uh, David invited you know, us into, into uh, climate dialogue group, and we participated there uh, in their uh, weekly monthly dialogues. And uh, through that, uh, uh, there is, uh, and I might say, uh, a request or or. Uh, we have uh, a group of people, those who are coming from uh, equatorial regions, those who are harshly affected by the climate uh, climate change, like Global South and uh, Asia and other parts of the world, even in North America. So, uh, so all of these people uh, are connected and sharing their experiences, how they are facing uh, the challenges of climate change. And then uh, with, with CDG, we, we started with Equatorial Voices Group there. And uh, as we, we grow together, uh, there is there is demand. There is a there is a necessity to have uh, small particular actions in terms of uh, combating climate change within the communities. As 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 we discuss many times, <clears throat> the small actions creates a big impact uh, as we're moving forward. So through CDG, we we. Uh, we come in as an equatorial voices network, and uh, it is it is basically it is basically a, a, a group of people. It is basically a, a network uh, bringing 
climate action lead, lead us together across national borders uh, uh, or for uh, communicating, for, for dialoguing, and for, for mutual support, shared learnings, and collaborative actions. So uh, we, we actually partnering within and between the countries, and even like as an EVN, uh, we, we spread information that is necessarily and truth, truthful in manner, uh, which, which, uh, which is experienced by all our equatorial members uh, in their region, in their countries, and in their communities. So, uh, so climate change, uh, as we all know, climate change is hitting every one of us, and and it needs uh, to be to be uh, to be a common platform to raise the voice, to raise uh, to raise the action uh, uh, together uh, with the uh, with the. Uh, the with the combined uh, with the combined action so uh, the climate so the equatorial voices uh, why we called it as equatorial voices that that uh, uh, it's it's for in my perspective uh, or in our members as we already discussed climate change is hitting every one of us but we felt that the most most of the impact of climate change is going to hit, uh, going to impact on those who are vulnerable, who are marginalized, and those who are downtrodden, with with less amount of resources, less amount of money, or less amount of like. We, we we see inequalities in all of our region and we face discrimination in the basis of race, gender, class, caste, and all. Within that, the climate the climate is uh, impacting in, in several ways. So our vision is to is to share share the knowledge, share the meaning, share the experiences that that we are. Uh, bringing together that it will all the equatorial voices network uh, and members are, are working in their own region and uh, they they tirelessly working uh, for combating climate change. So what exactly we are doing? Uh, whatever uh, the synthesis or or a small project, we are not uh, operating. Uh, in as a larger group at this moment, we are just building ourselves, and that's why we are here to connecting with uh, DTM. So uh, our main prospect is is uh, uh, to uh, to share the good practices, best practices that that are happening in in our field areas. As I am working, as as Katri and Robert is working in their regions, so we are uh, developing a knowledge, uh, developing a case studies that are impactful, that are that has a meaning, that can be sustainable to combat uh, climate change in coming future. So um, this is uh, what we are seeing, and. Uh, you know, this is what we are doing. Uh, my uh, other two colleagues will add into that. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, we are really looking forward to connecting with all of you in the future for the, for the betterment of society. Thank you. Raul, that's so helpful to learn more about the beginnings, the very beginnings, right, from the climate dialogue group through the emergence of the Equatorial Voices Network and the, the shared aspirations and, and resolve. And I know that Robert um, Maboise from Uganda is going to take us a little further now into 
short-term and long-term activities. So Robert, can you pick up from, from Raul? <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Raul. Uh, I'm Robert Mboizi from Uganda. I work with the Repart Foundation as a programs manager, but I'm also a human rights defender and a climate activist. So uh, just like my colleague Raul has pointed out, uh, we are coming from uh, vulnerable places in terms of climate crisis. And uh, we are having a lot of vulnerable communities around us. Raul has, uh, is coming from a terrible background in terms of the, the social discrimination taking place in his place. And equally, most of us are from different and difficult backgrounds. So in relation to that, uh, climate crisis uh, impacts us differently from a lot of people in different parts of the world. And uh, we as Equatorial Voices Network, uh, we are so much into solution-based thinking and our plans are around solutions. We really appreciate uh, uh, networks. That's why we managed to get in touch with the transformation network. And that's why we are having a strong relationship with the Climate Dialogue Group. And we also look forward to expand more with other groups because solutions, listening and sharing knowledge is one of the things that we appreciate most as we look at collectively respond to climate crisis in our own communities. So as a team, we are, we are, we are looking at different activities that some of them are already in place, others are being done. Uh, for instance, uh, periodically, uh, Equatorial Voices Network, we hold uh, bomb inspired dialogues to discuss issues of climate in our respective countries. We always get representatives from different countries. Uh, the last one we had was from Kenya. A few months back, we had someone from India. Different countries have been taking part in bomb inspired dialogue, which is important to know how our actions as humans have impacted the environment and how much it has affected other people's lives. And other activities that we are we are looking at, or we are doing some of us, uh, we are so much into uh, mass community awareness programs, Getry is always moving in groups and uh, in schools, sorry, opening up uh, climate and the environmental clubs. Other members are doing similar work in rural parts. We are doing tree planting, agroforestry, as some of the, the, the activities that we are doing. We are also planning to have school-based education programs. You may realize in Africa, we are due to pressure from communities, uh, we've embedded gender-related uh, studies in the curriculum at uh, different levels of education. So we as EVN in our respective countries, we are looking at influencing, advocating, uh, for integration of environment and climate studies from a lower level up to the top level in terms of uh, raising awareness so that people are groomed into being responsible in terms of defending their environment. Then we are also engaged in youth activities. We understand youth are the pillars of countries and they influence a lot in the way the world is shaping. So we are looking at participating or engaging the youth to take lead in protecting the environment. We are encouraging them, we are empowering them with education. And we as EVN, we are trying to develop uh, education programs for them. In a couple of months, as we look at uh, this programming and planning, we are looking at expanding this program and making it more practical. Because if you may realize uh, EVN is just in the formation stages, we've been there for a number of months, but each month, each time we share knowledge, we are building onto something. And uh, we as EVN, we appreciate uh, uh, what community resilience and adaptation. We also appreciate that uh, although there are a lot of strategies in mitigating climate crisis, some, some crisis is inevitable. So it is important to build capacity of communities 
to respond and to mitigate and also to adapt and become more resilient to climate crisis. So we as EVN, we foresee our position in the world as a solution-based team uh, full of innovation, full of strategies and full of collaboration to ensure that we end climate crisis across the world. I know it is an ambitious, an ambitious vision, but uh, it is important to believe and have faith. Each action, each small step is important. It transforms something. Each tree that you plant has an impact, however small it may be. So our short-term plans include community awareness programs in our respective countries. We are engaging our members. We are going to start engaging them, building their capacity to ensure that they are able to take a lead in community awareness in their respective countries. We are also looking at uh, setting up economically manageable projects in the tree planting. Already some people are doing it, Reparts has done it, and some people in their respective organizations are doing it because we appreciate the environment and we integrate it in every project that we, we do for sustainability. We are looking at also uh, tackling waste management. Some people are from urban based areas and waste management is one of the biggest challenges and pollution is at the highest in all urban areas across Africa and the global south. So waste management is an important aspect to tackle. We are looking at also uh, agriculture in terms of farmer gardens and kitchens, chicken, uh, kitchen gardening, because we understand that uh, women are affected most when there is shortage in food. And that's why climate crisis affects women most and other vulnerable groups. So it is important to tackle the aspect of food because some people uh, are engaged in crisis related activities as they look for means of survival. We are also looking at, these are short term plans. We are looking at also uh, engaging so much into research and information sharing. Uh, we have a lot of topics that are of interest. Uh, personally, I've been doing a lot of research around gender and the climate. And of course, the, the, uh, I've come to know that it affects women most, but a lot is happening in Uganda here in places that, that are having climate crisis. So we are, we are looking at research and we, have, we are going to build the capacity of our members to do that. We are also looking at lobbying community leaders. You can't operate in a vacuum if we want change. So you have to engage the leadership. How? To, um, to ensure that they strengthen policies and they amend laws that have these loopholes whereby there is a lot of waste and there is a lot of poor waste management. There is a lot of environmental uh, degradation that is, uh, that is facilitated by the, by the poor policies and uh, the laws. Yeah, so due to the, some of these forces, a lot of things are taking place. Some countries, including Uganda, they are looking at burning charcoal, charcoal making pro programs because they have a toll on an environment. Another one, we are looking at also intense mobilization. Until we appreciate that we can work together as a team and work together in terms of collaboration, we can't do it individually. We can always work, we can only work in teams. So one of the, uh, the, the major activities we are looking at, we are continuing to usher in male members who are like-minded in terms of environmental activism and defending. So we are looking at that. Then in the long term, we are thinking that EVGN, EV, EVN, which is Envi uh, Equatorial Voices Network, we are thinking of making it more of a broad network that is registered across countries whereby its sole purpose is to tackle issues related to environment and climate. I know there are a lot of challenges in the world, but that is our long-term goal, our formal registration as a global network. Then another thing is that we are encouraging our members to have uh, EVN-related activities in each country, kind of groups, networks at the uh, country level. Maybe you can have EVN Uganda, whereby organizations and members who are passionate about climate converge under that umbrella, discuss issues related to their countries so that they propose and innovate solutions that are tailored to their context and cultures. Then we are also looking at uh, uh, participating in the development of innovations and technologies. 
to respond to this climate crisis. Because until we act, we are not doing much. Every other day that you fail to act, you are doing yourself a disservice. Because any time, any day, climate crisis is on your door. So we are also looking at assessing the national laws and policies in relation to environment and trying to dig deep to understand what is their impact in our own countries and how best can we contribute to the amendment of these laws to strengthen them, to make sure they are in support of our work, to make sure that they, they respond to the gaps that are existing. Then we are also looking at, uh, currently we are having about people from seven to five countries, but we are looking at having a membership of around 20 countries, having more people from maybe West Africa, having more people from Northern Africa, having more people from Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and other countries, because climate crisis doesn't know regions, it cuts across. So it is important if we have representation in each of these regions, and we always call upon you all who wish to join us to always come through. Then uh, we are also looking at developing a big resource center to build the capacity of all climate activists and environmental uh, defenders. We understand there are a lot of people who are passionate about environment and climate, but many of them are incapacitated on how best to act, how best to respond, how to communicate, how do they conduct advocacy, how do they influence their countries and their communities to create change. So we want to lead change makers, we want to shape environmental activists, we want to shape the environmental defenders. So. Uh, in brief, I will end there. I think those are some of the aspirations and plans and activities that we are looking at doing. Some of them are already in process, but others are still in the pipeline. Thank you, members, for listening through. Back to you, Sylvia. Thank you. Robert, thank you so much. Um, there's so many parallels between the Deep Transformation Network and the Equatorial uh, Voices Network. We, the Deep Transformation Network um, grew out of more than one study circle, really long, year long um, study circles with Jeremy Lent, who was the author of The Patterning Instinct, looking at um, major cultural revolutions across the globe over the last 14,000 years of human history. And then out of that, moving into the web of meaning, really the, the essence of which is, it is the web of shared meaning. It is the web of life that em encirculates the whole of the earth, that comprises earth, that that web of life and love is meaning that meaning is love, love is meaning, you know, so that's a, a huge, huge uh, reduction and oversimplification of everything that has been contained in Jeremy Lent's work, but the Deep Transformation Network started with um, a group of a little more than a hundred who had been really engaged with Jeremy in examining the deepest roots of the degradation, the environmental degradation, the severity of climate change, the collapse uh, and the imminent collapse of so many systems. And, and understanding that so much of that is based not just on predatory capitalism, um, capitalism gone rampant, uh, overconsumption, um, greed, inequities between haves and have-nots, but so much of that based on how we view all of life, how we view the world, um, whether we see ourselves as, as top of the heap, so to speak, or simply a part of that intricate, wondrous web of all life, web of, of life between all humans, between all humans and non-human life. And if we are meeting one another with that kind of respect and reverence and reciprocity, then there's a chance for well-being. So 
but the deep transformation network was something that sort of surprised Jeremy as a tremendous researcher and scholar and, and writer and introvert in so many ways to say, we need to stay together you know, as a network, as a community and keep moving with this pulse of life that is coming through so many of us in the same ways that Raul and Robert, you just spoke of. One of the defining characteristics of the Deep Transformation Network thus far has been that it's a learning network, that it exists for the same reasons that you spoke of, Robert, in terms of bringing people together, being able to suspend assumptions, suspend judgment, um, meet and share information, share knowledge, share, examine things together. Um, look more deeply, look for what's working, look more closely at what's collapsing, what needs to collapse, what's emerging, what needs to be allowed to emerge and supported in its emergence. And there's been a lot of um, exchanges amongst people within the Deep Transformation Network about this creative tension really between, as Robert has just said, uh, living something, learning something um, in the deep transformation network, um, unlearning a lot of things like I'm appreciating that we as, as humans aren't the center of the universe. We don't have the right to just take everything, grab everything. Um, there's no human that, that supersedes any other human. Um, so being how can I, it's hard, it's hard to speak about these things in, in, in just, you know, a, a sentence or two, but that's how, uh, that's one of the things that has really connected everybody in the Deep Transformation Network is how can we act at every scale of activity? At the personal level, how can we transform ourselves? At the household level, at the neighborhood level, at the community level, at the level of a bioregion, at the level of country, continent, intercontinentally, globally, how can that transformation happen? What does it mean to recognize, first of all, recognize the need for transformation? What does it mean to support that? What does it mean to be a part of that? In that sense, to be a fractal of that global transformation. There are right now, I think, something like 42 groups that are active within the Deep Transformation Network. So what that means is of the 3,000 people that currently belong to the Deep Transformation Network and are scattered um, all around the globe, but with far less representation in the global south and in equatorial countries than in the global north, uh, and, and that has been, um, that's not been by design. Um, that's been just sort of a, a, an artifact of how deep transformation network emerged. Whereas the desire is just as Robert has also expressed, the desire is to reach across all those borders, to reach across all those differences. And to also recognize that, that in many ways, we're a, a twice divided world. Um, we're divided between global north and global south, but within every country, there are great divides. And just as Raul said in the, in the beginning, that, um, that recognition that we're, we're going to go back to Robert's notes, you know, climate change is in us, the experience of severe consequences of climate change are in every one of our lives and we're we're all in this together at the same time we're we're not in it with the same capability of resources to even survive it um, let alone transform you know major things so so recognizing that that divide is in all of our our home communities and home countries and not just between global north and global south is part of the 
the dialogue and the deliberations that happen within the Deep Transformation Network. So when I make reference to something like 42 groups, it means that people have self-organized around different uh, intentions and different areas of interest within the Deep Transformation Network. So Michelle and I are co-hosts of something called the Education Commons, which has a couple of hundred people in it, all of whom have spent a lot of their working life in educational systems, both community-based and institutional, university or school-based, many different kinds of education, many different kinds, of, many um, people active in instructional design, different delivering education, engaging people in different ways. And we've come together out of the interest of identifying what things are helpful, what things are working, um, what approaches are working, how can we amplify those? How can we share them when people are prototyping uh, new approaches? How can we provide a collaborative circle where people can do some of that thinking, that designing together or testing out ideas together or processing how effective something is or how it might be refined to become that much stronger and that much more applicable to, to many more settings. So the Education Commons is one group within the Deep Transformation Network. And when we began, thanks to David Albert and Nancy Grunich and, and Michelle, and I began to try to create a stronger bridge between the Equatorial Voices Network and others in the Deep Transformation Network, we said to one another, this is, this is bigger, this is way bigger than just what's happening within the education commons. So let's have, let's elevate this and have this happen across the whole of the network so that we can engage as many people in that pooling of awareness, pooling of resources, pooling of experience about what's working, what's helping, what can be put to um, to work at every scale, really. At the same time, there are also, um, again, paralleling what you've just said, Robert, there are local groups that are specific to just a particular bioregion or a particular country. There are groups that, that meet together um, every week just for deep listening or every other week for meditation. So we're pulling from a um, a non just headspace, you know, we're pulling from the deepest heart of our hearts um, together for the for the good of all and and for our own um, refinement, I guess I would say in that refinement, resurgence, regeneration. Uh, so there are circles of of meditation that happen. There are circles that are focused uh, or groups that are focused particularly on action and on organizing using the socioc sociocracy method of organizing that are using community uh, citizens assemblies uh, that are using tools like kitchen table conversations and various ways of, of, of pulling people together. Um, I know I'm missing big swaths of activity here. Uh, there are study circles where people are reading particular books together and sharing what they can pull from those books and put into practice uh, in a different way. So there are small, mid-size, <laughs> very large circles of, of activity. And right now, one of the things that's very alive within the Deep Transformation Network is both increasing depth in every one of those, those groups. There is um, something new called practices of deep transformation where people are sharing with one another the personal and community practices that are for them experiences of very, very, very great transformation where people are also sharing what has, um, I know how to speak of this in, again in just a sentence or two, but sometimes, sometimes there's a break for people in practices that have long worked that aren't working. And something 
new, something is transfer, transforming even in the nature of practices of what people have learned to do and to do with one another. And so that's a place where that practicing together and that deepening of insight is happening. Uh, the network is, um, there's no cost to belong. Uh, there's no charge for uh, anything that happens within the network where some people will promote courses or workshops through the network. And there may be a charge for those, but those are completely, um, there's, there's simply a way of letting people know about further resources. And there's typically a sliding scale if there is an activity that somebody is uh, announcing and welcoming uh, people to. There are a group of about two dozen individuals who are called moderators who are not policing anything <laughs> on the network, but that are really just trying to keep our, our fingers on the pulse, you know, on the changes and the patterns that are happening in the network, and who are also like Michelle and like me are hosts of different circles or who are hosts of live events. We have a network-wide live event that happens every month on the first Tuesday of every month. And we have many other events that happen. So um, if you are the least bit interested in staying engaged, if you're new to the Deep Transformation Network and you want to stay engaged, there is a 20 minute video that Michelle has, has uh, designed and delivered and that is on the platform, on the Mighty Networks platform. So it's an easy sort of 20 minutes. How do you make your way around this and how do you find out what's happening and how do you find your way into different groups and how do you stay um, engaged with different threads of discussion? There is a lot of information posted every single day of every week in every month that comes and a lot of discussion that happens on the things that are posted. So there's, we try to keep a lot of vitality by having live events because we believe that, that things happen person to person, heart to heart, um, mind to mind, and, and that it is so important to have these, these ways and places in which we can be with one another in, in a state of unknowing and yet in a state of complete openness for what wants to come through us and happen um, in part because, because we're ready for it to happen and, uh, and we're, we're here to help it happen. Um, Michelle, I'm gonna invite you to just um, add anything to that, that in, in terms of summary of Deep Transformation Network that I've really glaringly left out because uh, the six of us have met just in the 20 minutes before we opened this session here. And I'm speaking very much um, off just the top of my head, the top of my heart here. So Michelle, anything that I, that you want to thread in there? Um, no, I, I think you've done a really wonderful job of, of summarizing where Deep Transformation Network came from and what the different um, groups and, and intentions and uh, subgroups are within it. And again, um, I think the only thing that I would add is that it is this constantly self-organizing and reorganizing living system that is um, figuring out what it's doing as it goes along. <laughs> um, and, and this uh, team of, of moderators um, who are really just trying to make sure that it holds to the originating intention of being inclusive, being welcoming, and um, being focused on this these critical needs right now of uh, societal change um, so that we can, you know, survive the, the current crisis period that we're in, especially around uh, climate and environmental degradation. So. 
I, you know, I'd add one other thing too, and that is that while I made the distinction that the Deep Transformation Network is consciously a learning network uh, and has, and the people in it have recognized that we have a lot to learn and a lot to unlearn in order for transformation to happen. And, and we need to really put that learning at the center of everything. There, there has been respect all the way through that, that, that people are putting their learning and their awareness into action. And we're not here to sort of say, and this is the action that you must do or that you should be doing. And that, that so much action is happening all the time um, and, is, and is happening in ways that it's not all visible in the network. So it, we're kind of in a, trans, in a transition place right now of are we as a global network or as an international network, are we becoming more clearly a collaborative action network? And all the kinds of actions that you referenced, um, Robert, are, have been part of that discussion too. So I'm just saying that we, we're aware of kind of holding that in balance. Like how can we support one another in the action that they take that is not, that is completely congruent with the principles and the vision and the tenets of the network, but that isn't, commanded or directed by the network as an organization? And how can we get better because of the network and through the network at taking action together also? So that sounds probably clear as mud, but that's um, part of finding our way together. So uh, Getri, Getri, do you want to um, kick us off? I'm gonna ignite the breakout session here. Thank you, Pooja. Um, good evening, good morning, friends. I'm sorry I'm seated in a place that is a bit noisy. I was on my home. Uh, but I think we are going to head to a breakout session. And uh, probably we'll ask uh, friends going to breakout session to look at what what is the what is connecting us. How do you see yourself going uh, from where we are? Um, I think after hearing Rahul and Robert, and then we have had um, Sylvia about the transformation network. EVN is focused on uh, growing and having practical impact on the ground because we're not just talking about the politics in the shelf, but how do we make the ground feel the importance of talking about climate change? And uh, as Robert said, in small ways, so those small small footsteps, we need to have a connection and a collaboration. And I think this is heading us to the breakout session with a discussion. Let's friends discuss on how do we connect? How do you see yourself moving from where we are right now? And uh, we'll come back for reflection as we move into way forward for the future. Michelle, are you going to help me with the breakout, breakout session? Yes, so so I'll be sending you into breakout rooms in just a moment. And uh, Getri, I just put in the chat, I think, a summary of, of the key questions for our conversation. Uh, what is connecting us and how do we collaborate in moving toward action? Um, and yeah, Sylvia's got that, I think, captured a little better. Uh, needing co connection and collaboration. How do you see us connecting and how can we help one another? Um, so what we're going to do is uh, have you in breakout rooms of three or four um, and we'll give you um, about 15 minutes total. So that means that each person probably should speak, you know, offer their response uh, for about um, two, two and a half minutes each, and then um, have some time for a little bit more open discussion. And then we'll move back into the larger group and, uh, and open that up further as we um, have a chance to, to converse in the larger room. But this way, everyone will have a chance to really get their thoughts 
uh, out. And so I invite you um, to, as we're transitioning, think about your responses to that. And when it's your turn to speak, speak from the heart. When it's not your turn to speak, listen as deeply as you can. Um, so with that, I will move everyone into our breakout rooms and you'll get a notice when there's uh, 60 seconds left. That doesn't mean you have to come back right away. That just is an, an indication to wrap up your thoughts and then you'll be coming back in. So here we go. Take a moment to kind of get, uh, get some feedback from people from their conversations. Um, and then uh, Getri will offer us some deeper reflections. Um, So, um, so I got to be in room one a little bit with Diana, Elizabeth, and Robert, but does uh, someone from that room want to say a little bit about uh, just one or two key things that came out of your conversation? And feel free to just unmute yourself. Um, Diana, Elizabeth, or Robert, you want to speak up? Yes, yes, please come again with the question. Oh, just uh, if you can give one or two um, sure. key things okay. that came out of the conversation, just so we can get a sense of what these different rooms were talking about. Okay, uh, now breakout room, uh, we discussed about three major issues. One is the misinformation. We know there is a lot of desire for more knowledge around climate issues and environment, but also we acknowledge there is a lot of misinformation being shared online and different uh, media outlets that misinform the public, that misguide people. So in relation to that, uh, Diana shared some issue around Canada, but also was saying that when we come together, it is also an opportunity to verify this information. We have a lot of people from different backgrounds, a lot of people from different communities and networks who can always help us to identify facts in relation to a specific information that we are looking at. Then another issue we looked at was the, the issue of supporting one another. When we come together, we can support one another. You can hear someone's uh, uh, project idea all the activities they are doing. And you can be supportive, not necessarily monetarily, but also through technical support, through cheerleading them, through guidance, so that they are, they are able to do something that is more impactful. Then another one was about uh, capacity building. So it would be important that if DTN and other groups, CDG and EVN come together, we can build the capacity of some of the environmental defenders and climate activists in different countries, especially in the global health. Some of them are passionate, but they are incapacitated to impact. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Um, so uh, room two, it looks like just Getri and Margaret ended up staying in that room. Um, Get, Getri, do you wanna just give us one or two key points from there? I think um, there's, a, there's a very deep connection on the roles we are playing in our own small ways. And uh, we might not be knowing each other, but everybody is making an effort to talk about the climate change and doing something about the climate change. So that it's not just a discussion, it's an action oriented. And I think what you discovered, I'll pick from uh, Martin Luther King, uh, when he said, be the change you wish to be. For a change to happen, each of us has to play, has to play a role. And so the question is, what do we do when you talk about connection? And uh, being with Robert, in the, I think Robert has a circle in the, in the Deep Transformation Network. 
And as she was explaining what she's doing, and I could see what TBN is doing, there's a very clearly connection and a close relationship. And I think for me, it was uh, the group discussion was heritage somewhere that we are actually doing something all of us, just like we don't know what we are doing at our own small level. And um, let's see, we'll go to the room three. It looks like just uh, Lisa and Nancy and Ray were in there. Um, so if you can just give us one or two key takeaways really quickly. We spend time getting to know each other and sharing network contacts in the uh, respective regions uh, that we are in. Uh, and Nancy may have further things to say. Or Lisa may have further things to say. Well, the recognition, I think this is something we can help each other do, is each of us finding that part of this work that means the most to us that is within our whatever our limitations or opportunities might look like. And we were talking about the need for that and helping each other do it, but it feels like something that is quite fundamental. So in answering the question, how might we work together? That might be one of the things I could imagine within the education commons happening. Lisa, I, um, did you want to add anything? Okay, I guess we're good. No, gonna... I think you got it. Thank you. It's good meeting you. Yeah. Very good. Great. Um, okay, so uh, next room had Anna, Nathan, Raul, and Sandy. You had uh, one or two, especially if it's something that you haven't heard yet, uh, just one or two quick key takeaways. Uh, I, Sandy, uh, Anna, and uh, Nathan was there. And uh, first uh, five, five, six minutes, I explained them all the scenario why why we came uh, together and uh, explained them, uh, explain them about uh, the necessity of two things in collaboration uh, with the two groups. And I urged them to uh, reflect on how we can collaborate uh, in, in common terms. So in the first and most valid question that Sandy, uh, not question, but comment uh, she raised like uh, she is from uh, Global South and uh, she also mentioned about uh, Base inequalities and discrimination works in our domain. And so, before uh, connecting or uh, before uh, moving to the next step, we need to understand each other how, from which background we are coming from, and how our, our uh, realities are. Are uh, not different plate, but uh, from a different geographies. That's that's uh, the key takeaway for me uh, from our uh, uh, cohort. Uh, Sandy, uh, you want to add, or uh, Nathan, Anna? I think you captured it beautifully, Raul. Perfect. Great. Um, so let's uh, move on very quickly. Again, just uh, if you can keep your comments really brief so we can get these last three rooms a little bit from what you gathered. Um, room five was Kathleen, Leonita, John, and Linda. You know, I'll just jump in with a quick comment. We were, um, Linda and I as co-directors and co-founders of the Climate Dialogue Group, I think I just have to say that we are so inspired to be part of this and to hear the, the, the Ecuador voices who we helped sponsor 
and you know about a year ago and see what has happened it's just been this has been fascinating but also to hear have leonita in this in this group and what she's also doing in kenya an amazing uh effort at at uh, agricultural regeneration and and going back to indigenous practices it's it's incredible i was struck by the notion that so many of us are here from global north and the thought that we in the global north are bringing something to those in the equatorial regions has just been exploded in my mind it's what you're bringing to us that is most valuable the the, the inspiration and the things that you're doing actions online solutions planning it's it's truly remarkable very heartfelt thank you for what you're bringing to to us linda um, and kathleen I think the thing. Uh, yeah, that, thank you for I, saying that. I I totally agree. I think the thing that I might add is, um, it's also such information that we don't get up in the north. I mean, we don't really hear the ins and outs of people, you know, facing the drought conditions, having to migrate, what that means in terms of their livelihood. So, I think getting that firsthand report helps at least me feel more connected to other places and other struggles that are happening around the world. And it's important that we get that information out somehow. So I'm really delighted that we're able to have this level of sharing. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, thanks, Linda. Okay, uh, next room, uh, David, Larissa, and Richard. Anyone from that group? Well, Larissa will jump in. <clears throat> Larissa justly pointed out that um, in addition to climate change, so many groups in society, both here and abroad, but she was specifically addressing North America, experience other forms of trauma, uh, some of them having to do with race. I, and I added, well, you know, that, that the three coordinators of equatorial voices have other things that they, you know, climate was almost piled on top of the things they're already doing and the awful situations that they're facing there. And so we discussed the possible need for DTN and maybe the climate dialogue group to um, develop a both a BIPOC caucus and maybe as well a disability caucus because again climate change has impacts on people with disabilities that we almost never talk about and it's and there it's really a big deal and so that needs some effort on the part of both the climate dialogue group and dtn think about how they would go about establishing such um such networks within their groups Larissa, do you want to add anything? Thanks. Well, thanks for um, taking that on, David. Yes, I, I was, um, you know, in the context of how we can communicate genuinely and effectively across these um, connections that have been established by this beautiful um, conversations. You know, I've learned so much from um, the first talk by Leonida and then the subsequent meetings with the EVN group. I really appreciate um, DVN and, and the subgroups that have made this happen. Um, but to me, uh, the, the lack of a conversation about race, the underlying factor in how climate catastrophe is playing out across the world, um, has to affect, you know, how how fully and genuinely we can communicate across these different experiences. Um, thanks. Thanks, Larissa. Um, and then our our last room here again. Just uh, if you can keep your comments nice and brief, Bruce, Howard, and Sylvia. I just jump in and say, um, making it impossible 
for any one of us to ignore what is happening, reminding one another of all the things that we already know how to do or that someone knows how to do and, and being reminded that we can also take that action, amplify that action. Uh, for some of us, slowing down and not proposing the solution, but listening, 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 encouraging one another, um, trusting in that which is which is unfolding and happening and just really staying in solidarity with one another and continuing to to pool resources quite literally okay so um uh next up getri is going to offer some reflections on uh what's transpired here so i'll just leave it to you Thank you, Michelle. I think I want to appreciate each and everyone for your participation and uh, trying to ensure that you are uh, having a very constructive conversation. And uh, I'll just let each of us know that uh, the discussion was on recording and uh, we're taking some notes. So we are hoping to build up from here. I think it's a total goes as well we are. Our focus way forward is to look at um, how do we come from where we are? And I think we need a connection, we need a network. We need to grow. And uh, from what we are hearing, starting from Climate Dialogue Group, we have the Cultural Voices Network, we have uh, Deep Transformation Network. We are looking at how do we dive and help heal our societies. It's, it cannot just happen for me. I've, I've had various uh, resources. The major thing that has affected us is the misinformation. Sometimes when you talk about climate change, it becomes like a, a rumor. Sometimes it becomes like a myth. It becomes like a picture story. But those who are living on the ground, we could see how it's affecting. There are some parts in Kenya that are experiencing drought for the last three years. That's northern part of Kenya. We have parts in Uganda that are experiencing severe slides. In Congo, people are dying because of mudslides. And so when we are at that point, we, we have to really think about what are we doing as human beings in this situation? And I think hearing different people, I think for Robert, uh, Robert uh, Rahul and Getri, Nancy and other friends who are friends of the cultural voices, we are looking at how do we connect the points? How do we connect the links and making ourselves move from place to place? Because that's where we are, guided by these kind of networks. That's why we are guided by friends who are, by friends who are uh, on this uh, wall. And then we are hoping that going from here, we might end up having series and series of engagement to help act out and do the right thing for our earth and have a loving earth that we're looking at. And I really want to appreciate each one who has come because I think for us, it's just not a topic. It is a focus. It's just not a discussion, but it's, it's an action oriented. It's a do, to do list. And they're looking at how do we grow a generation that is looking at that point. I will really wish to, to is, there, is there any question, but I really wish to hand over to Nancy to get us through a final wrap up. <laughs> You're a hard act to follow, Getri. <laughs> um, the main thing coming up for me at this point is on the one hand, the enormous power of us just knowing each other and telling each other our stories and making what we only hear in the news come alive. We are real human beings and we are in this together and the opportunity to be together in that, but in telling the stories, but then on the other hand, the very um, practical in these stories, there's not only the challenges and the problems, but I've been privileged to know in detail what Getri is doing, the enormous number of things that Rahul and Robert and Getri are each of them doing on the ground. It feels to me like we've just started what 
could be an ongoing conversation, deepening our concrete understanding of each other's work and each other's lives and who we are and making those connections. And I have a practical question. We could continue this within the context of the education commons, but concerned that that might in a sense take over the purposes of that group. So I'm unclear, I'm quite new to the Deep Transformation Network. I'm quite unclear how to proceed from here. Um, it, a number of questions and ideas have been surfaced. I know that this was recorded, we'll hear it again. We can go back to the notes, we can identify uh, the things that were raised. Leonita, who has been mentioned, is extraordinary. Some of us got to hear her a few weeks ago because Equatorial Voices brought her to speak to a group of some 20 people. But I mean, she should be heard by hundreds. The quality of agroecology that she is promoting and teaching throughout Africa. And each of us is finding very concrete solutions for myself in the global north. I couldn't continue the work I'm doing here without feeling that I had direct personal connection with and the opportunity to learn from people who are in the frontline communities here and now. And not only have I learned, I have to tell you, my hope, my courage, my sense of somehow as humans, we can do it, has been so profoundly shaped by it. So I, right now, I just wish that for all of us. And on the other hand, I go back to the question David Albert posed so well, can we learn together and not only learn, but help teach? How is it that we can come together? How do we learn? There's, there's difficult things, there's difficult histories, there's fears, there's ways we get it wrong on all sides. So can we help each other get better? at doing that and therefore less afraid of each other and able to take what we're learning together and take it out into our communities at local levels and into our intermediate levels, into our governments, into our professions, into our lives on many fronts. I think with that, um, if nothing else, it is a, a very fulfilling way to be alive. So that's maybe the impetus for us to then figure out some practical next steps for us. And I would suggest, I know that Nathan and Nightingale, uh, Nightingale's from Kenya and Nathan are working on planetary health issues. That's very close to what um, Leonida is working on. So it could be that we could create something, another presentation for the larger uh, deeper, deep transformation network community uh, continuing to expand it. So DTN itself has the opportunity to get more exposure while we either within ed education commons or so especially formed group for that purpose can continue these deeper conversations with each other. Good timing. I'll just add to that, that uh, we will have the recording uh, and the chat posted on the Deep uh, Transformation Network very soon. I will add to that as one of the hosts, I'll just um, extract from the this hour and a half session and from the chat specific action ideas that have been articulated. Some of those I know won't be in the chat or the recording because they happened in the breakout groups in a more fulsome way. So I trust that everybody holds them in your, your consciousness and they're still alive in the space between us. And I just want to affirm that we can continue to hold these sessions with the Deep Transformation Network. We can make them events that are open to everybody in the Equatorial Voices Network and everybody in the climate dialogue group and in the deep transformation network so that, that there's no gate there. Um, we can create a separate space, um, a separate group space 
for additional live events that are just about the question of right relationship with one another and how we stay uh, in right relationship with one another. We can, if it's, um, we can we can also create um, or build or merge with existing spaces on the Deep Transformation Network where the attention is specifically on what action at a community level is being taken to combat the consequences of, of what's being lived right now. And uh, I know that I would just do the best that I can to help with all of those things. And I just wanna remind everybody who's present today that when we put the chat and the recording of this session up, there's lots of room and it's nonstop room to keep interacting in discussion thread on that. And I know that Michelle and Nancy and I, and I trust that David, you will, and others will too, that, that we'll keep monitoring that and keep, keep building. Michelle? So um, yeah, we are a little past closing time, but I do wanna say that uh, if people are interested, we can stay on another 10 or 15 minutes uh, if there's further questions or conversation. But if you're uh, you know, feeling that 90 minutes was your limit and it's time to go, um, by all means, uh, we we honor and respect your your time and your needs. So um, leave if you need to leave, stay if you really want to stay, and we will uh, just kind of continue with any conversation or questions for the people who can stay. And uh, and this goes for uh, Getri and Raul and, and Robert also um, certainly welcome to stay on with further conversation. But if you're feeling the need to go now, um, thank you so so much. For, for being here, for um, uh, making this conversation uh, the beautiful thing that it was. Deeply appreciated. So I see uh, Linda and Larissa put their hands up. Oh, and we've got Nicole. Uh yeah. There, I mentioned concrete things, so I just want to say one right now because it might be something Sylvia mentioned. Robert Mboise is creating a business in Kenya called Good Ground Enterprises, managing uh, waste, water, and energy. And he's looking for people brainstorming with him to help develop a stronger business plan for a social enterprise plan, B Corp kind of set up there. And it would support a number, Robert, we haven't discussed it, but Robert is supporting a great many other people in Kenya dealing with some of the challenges that are there. So some of these in Uganda, I'm sorry, I kept saying Kenya meant Uganda. So another thing we can be doing is giving each other that kind of practical help as well. Uh, I'll just say a quick thing. Um, if anyone is interested, I, I've been doing climate activism for a number of years, and it seems like it, it always kind of falls between what can we do to, you know, fix the immediate problem? How do we stop the bleeding? Uh, and then there's also the need that we all have to go beyond that, which is how do we, how do we change our consciousness <laughs> that we're living life so that, you know, we, we create a world that we all want, one that nurtures all of us. So at least we're trying to do some of that with our Bowman Inspired Dialogue. And I just wanted to invite anyone who wants to take that kind of dive to come join us um, Tuesday mornings. We, we meet 8.30 to 10.30. We're very interested in that inner dive um, and fostering the kinds of supportive relationships so that we can feel, <laughs> feel our way through uh, what, what we're going through. It's not, a, you know, the, the solutions to immediate problems and the bleeding generally comes from our left brain, but a lot of times if we're going to change your consciousness about the whole thing, we need a supportive space where we can think with our whole brain. So we're, we're trying to do some of that in the, in the uh, climate dialogue group. So I would love to see any of you there who'd like to journey with us in that way. Thanks.
ongoing network. Yeah, that was one question I had in the deep transformation network. I'm just getting to know you. Do you provide uh, spaces for dialogue, just general dialogue? Cool. I'd like to learn more about that. Linda, I have something set up for next Sunday that I'm offering to the group. It's got a very small attendance right now, um, but I, I can send other people a link or I can place it here in the chat. I, I would say it's, it's Bohmian dialogue, but it's a little bit different than we've been doing together because it's informed from other practices that I've done. I'm, I don't have a name for it. I have called it in the group transformative dialogue. And so it's exactly, Howard was in our group, Howard Ward was in my breakout group and he was talking about the need really to get at the base of what thinking is. Right. And we are going to do that, but we're not gonna do it by using thinking. We're going to do it by using silence. And I'll explain that more in the group. I can paste the link for the registration here in the chat, but it'll take me a minute to get it. Cool. When did, when did you say it would be? It, it's on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Um, so I just want to say um, thank you to Robert for his very comprehensive list of um, actions and vision going forward. Uh, you know, just the year it was in and of itself um, inspiring and encouraging and heartening. So um, I really appreciated that. And in the context of you know, the extraordinary pressures that must be on you, Robert, um, to be able to give us no this talk today. Um, I really appreciated that. Thank you. Robert and Getri and Raul, I don't want to put you on a hot seat in any way, but if there's something really top of mind that is a big yes in you as to next step, engaging both of our networks, please, please take some airtime right now if, if there is something really present for you. And, and please also take the invitation to write that into discussion thread later uh, or just stay in touch with follow-up okay uh, thank you uh, hello sylvia i i think i'll i'll be requesting to leave i have another one now on the road going home but i'm i'm really looking forward for more and more connections and discussion on this and i think i'll send an email out and uh, organizing ourselves where we can okay but for sure i think at EVN we just need to have a meeting with uh, nancy you and michelle and have a deeper discussion on what we're looking at it's something i've been discussing with raul and uh, and robert uh, i think the conversation in this uh in this uh this discussion of today, the, the, the Zoom for today has brought the same conversation we have been having. So hope to see you again soon. <laughs> bye everyone. Thank you. I'm gonna take bye, bye get ready. take care. Much. Go safe. Yeah, uh, thank you Getri. I know she has left. And thank you members for coming through. And just like uh, uh, what Raul, uh, sorry, what Getri said, uh, we shall need to sit down as a team with Livia, Nasa and uh, Michelle and plan our next steps forward. But we still encourage our members to take action. No matter how small it might be, uh, we'll create a meaningful change and uh, yeah, try to 
curb climate crisis. It won't wait for our actions. So we shall have to act now, not later. So each of us, I know some of us are doing different things like Nasa have said, uh, I'm doing in, I'm, I'm setting up a project in waste management. Yeah, because I'm responding to environmental pollution and poor waste disposal. So each one of us can play a role in their communities as we pull resources together in terms of technical support and others so that we create change. I really appreciate the transformation network for this platform and for supporting our efforts through sharing and learning and hope to build on to this. Thank you so much, Zevia, Michelle, and And Robert, if you if you want, as soon as you want, if you want to have a session that focuses specifically on good ground and your new enterprise there, just just send word, just send word, and we'll host that. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be in touch. I will also be a part. I want to be a part of that. Great, great. Well, I'll just I'll just say from the Climate Dialogue Group, we want to be part of that as well. So we, uh, uh, having been at the ground floor in the sponsoring group, we uh, we we're still still taking inspiration from, if you will, from this group that has kind of sprung from our midst, and now we are seeing the the impetus uh, in terms of the action that we take as the climate dialogue group. We've been a kind of a holding pattern, but you know, what are the actions that we can take in the in the in the sphere that we've we've you know envisioned, which is uh, not so much local on ground, but how do we sponsor similar similar impacts like the Equatorial Voices have have uh, brought forward? It's it's so inspiring. So we want to be part of that conversation and collaborate in any way we can, include each other in this in this uh, in this communication. So please do keep in touch with us. Thank you again, Robert Raul. John, let me before you go and Bruce, if I could just re I regret Bruce that actually I will be in silence in my quarter meeting on the West Coast at exactly the time you will be doing your your event on the East Coast. So I regret not being able to be part of it. I noticed um, somebody mentioned quickly that Viola Davis in the Deep Transformation Network has a space or practice, mm. practice of own dialogue that, that was mentioned. So I'm wondering, is there some nexus here already that exists where Climate Dialogue Group, which is um, led by John and Linda uh, doing BOEM inspired dialogue. That's how I first came to know these things and, and first met uh, Robert and uh, Rahul and Getri. And what Bruce is doing, would there be some way that we that could, does that already exist in DTN that we could come together there or what? I, I, let me, since I'm not a moderator here and so I know less than the other two, let me give you my impression as someone who's just relatively new, only a couple of weeks in the Deep Transformation Network. There's a subgroup there that is not yet public on practices of deep transformation. And that's where I've been mostly involved in that. And I would say that group is still trying to figure out what it's, what it's doing. There is a movement within the group to make the group public, I think relatively quickly, because it seems quickly to me because I haven't been there very long, but for the people who've been there long, or they're ready to make it public. But there aren't any specific practices that I would say that the group is agreed on that they're doing, but it would be a space where people could bring different practices. So there is someone else there who is going to, I'm sure is going to bring listening practices there. So there's already a listening group that meets once every two weeks, which is like something like Bohemian Dialogue. It's in the same kind of general area. And I want to bring my own practice there, which doesn't have a name, but is deeply influenced by Bohemian dialogue, but also influenced by Quaker practice. And so that, that part, that Quaker practice of silence isn't usually part of Bohemian dialogue. 
Also, there's other parts of Bohmian dialogue or the things that I do that come from what are called council and council practice is not usually part of Bohmian dialogue. So I did cross training and all these things and kind of have brought them together. I think it's, you know, I think I am very much in the spirit of what Bohm wanted, even though it's not how people do Bohmian dialogue. I think if we're going to get beyond thinking, we can't just sit there and talk about our ideas. It's just never going to get us out of, out of our heads. We have to find ways to get us out of our heads. And that Quaker practice of speaking out of silence is one way that we can begin to get out of our heads. I think there are others, but that's one of the way. So that's kind of what it looks like to me. It's, a, it's forming. I want to bring what I'm offering there. It's yet to know whether it's going to be accepted or not. Um, and you know, if, if it is, I'm really, I'm 100% for it. If it's not, I try to have other things in this, trying to take the same practice to other groups in my local network. And so we'll just see what happens. I'll just, I'll just note of interest and not an accident, I expect that Robert Mboise and Getri are both very, very active Quakers in Kenya and very active leaders in, in, in Uganda. In Uganda and Kenya, um, there are, as you probably know, Bruce, uh, Kenya has the largest population of Quakers in the world by three times as many as anywhere else, and many in Uganda as well. Uh, and there are interesting cross connections across all these different pieces. I didn't know that, that's really interesting. And, and I'll just, add to Bruce's comments that there is a member of the Deep Transformation Network who has been holding Bohmian dialogue circles on an ongoing basis, which is additional to what is emerging through the practices group. So, um, so Sylvia, who is, who is that that's been holding them? And can you put that in the chat as well? I'm going to have to follow up because I don't have it. I, you know that's the thing with all these groups and three thousand people and forty two groups and I and I can't think of her name on the tip of there my tongue. Was Sylvia? There was a woman mentioned as doing that in DTN. Her name was Viola Davis. I wrote right. it down. I don't know if that's the person you have in mind. I think you you may be thinking of Viola Olson. Viola Davis. Maybe Olson. I probably I missed her. her. Yes. Would that be it? Um, but I have to check that I, because again, I, I'm, I don't have it right at fingertips, but John, I will, I noticed that you popped your, uh, email into the chat too, and I'll, I'll follow up. Great. Thank you. Nicole, Nicole Mwamba, since you're still here, I would love to hear from you for a moment. You're a new a name new to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm new. I, I was just introduced uh, by, by by my colleagues in Kenya. So this is just my second to be uh, to participate in this in this program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm from Zambia. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. Nicole, do, do you have any thoughts from what you heard today? Um, best, best, you best this basically, I, I I missed the program because my, my timing was different with the time I I, I saw. So I've, I've just come 10 minutes after the program has ended. We will put I the, see. We will put the recording and the chat up, Nicole, so you'll be able to access that if you'd like to listen to it later. It'll be up, Michelle, probably within within 24 hours, I think. Thank you. Yeah. And Robert has your address, Nicole, so we can send you an email about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I'll be I'll be grateful if you can send me my, the, the email, yes. Yeah, that's in the chat. Thanks, Nicole. Oh, good. Uh, you have seen my email in, in the chat? Yes. Okay, well, uh, it's probably about time to wind this down. So I want to, again, thank you all for, for staying with this and um, just really appreciating everything that seems to be emerging here and all of the enthusiasm around it. And thank you, Michelle and Sylvia for doing your always wonderful. <laughs>
wonderful job of facilitating. <laughs> and John and, and John and Nancy and the other climate dialogue people, thanks so much. It's really amazing what's happened with this. Truly, truly, Bruce. We had no idea where this was going. We started. But this the was... only thing I know at this point about Bohm Dialogue is it promises the unexpected, amazing outcomes if you just hang in there. And so far, I have seen that proven to be true. <laughs> is, is, yeah, exactly, Nancy. As long as we listen deeply to each other without judgment or without expectation of what we want to have happen and uh, stay open to the shared meaning, then the unimagined can happen. And that's what uh, that's what we've witnessed. And I think staying present to that serendipity and that evolution and unfolding is where we need to keep our hearts and our minds mm -hmm. so that we we take we we bask in the full advantage of what what can happen. And that's what we're doing. And Rahul and Robert Getty's not here now, but you guys did the wonderful job that I knew you would do. It was really, really a joy to be with you today. Yeah, superb. We're so grateful. Thank you, Nancy. It, it, it's a pleasure meeting you all here. And uh, thank you, Michelle, Sylvia, and others who gave us space to explore. And uh, uh, in my, uh, just to share a last comment, uh, if you find commonalities, we have several commonalities, like we, we are doing the things that uh, impact uh, in the larger community. So we just need to brainstorm ourselves where we can meet and where uh, we can explore the opportunities uh, so that uh, it could be uh, uh, a larger picture, and that's what I will. I will connect uh, separately with you, uh, with my team, uh, with Nancy and others uh, to see uh, the foreseeable uh, things that we can collaborate. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Great. Thanks.